Hi guys, it's Matt, and today we're going to be reviewing and running this MTH Rail King Norfolk and Western 460 and MTH Premier Baltimore and Ohio wood sided passenger cars. This will basically be a three part series. This will be part one reviewing this beautiful engine, part two reviewing the three beautiful wood sided passenger cars, and then three show you what how, how I get all this to work. And first of all, I would like to conclude that Matt's Basement Railway now has MTH DCS or the Maryland Northern now has MTH's digital command system. No, I am not fully going to a MTH person. I'm going to stick with Lionel mostly. This one I bought as a little thing that I'm that a little side project. And you're probably wondering asking, well, where's the SP Daylight? Well, I had to send it out because the PS2 control boards busted out and now I had to get a new engine. So, we'll start at the front here with this beautiful engine. This pilot uh, is this to point out one thing this whole engine even the tender is die cast metal this whole thing is die cast there's probably little plastic stuff like the headlight and these handrails and other piping but other than that it's all die cast metal so this is a mostly a molded in uh, plow you got the cuts or rivets in there basically I like to call them cuts and that's basically it they put in a molded in coupler I See that I don't really like the molded in. I'm not crazy about all the molded in stuff, but molded stuff is good. But I bet you for a reason they're going in for a cheap price. Moving up the engine a little bit, you got these plastic grab irons, and then you got a uh, builder's plate slash numbers plate because back in the 1800s or late 1800s, the engines would use their builder's plate as their number plate as well. Moving up. You got fake marker lights right here, which aren't really that nice compared to the marker lights that you find on the new Premier engines or the new Rail King engines, even the new Legacy engines. And you got rivets in for the front boiler front here, which are pretty nice. And you move up, and then you got your headlight, Norfolk and Western number 43. This is a Norfolk and Western 460. You got the gold leafing that goes around, and you got the gold leafing paint on number 43 it has a constant voltage headlight which is pretty nice you got this whole stand right here that holds the headlight that's metal and gold gold painting and then the same thing goes for the other side so this whole thing is die cast so when you look up at the top of the engine you got this nice big diamond stack smoke stack it's really really nice so that's what I like about it I think the smoke will build up in here sometimes and then it'll just shoot right out Moving down a bit farther, you got rivets in your in your cylinders here, and it's just shiny, bright black paint. You can see my finger in the reflection. It's pretty nice. And you got what's supposed to be a builder's plate here, as you, if you could see the little circle cut there. Moving back a little bit farther, you got the plastic grab irons, and you got a metal bell, metal sando, and you got this metal whistle, and the the blowout and well, I don't know what they call that but in the boiler you got molded in piping which I'm not really crazy about and you got this beautiful blue boiler all MTH Aero King 460 10 whalers that look, are designed exactly like this have this exact same blue so don't be a stranger to it got this perfectly big walkway which is really nice so I'm not I'm, I'm I love that and it's a nice big walkway so you won't fall unlike the other modern steam locomotives we have today where the walkway is probably not even half a foot and then coming down farther you got these big drive wheels and big driving rods all this gearing is, is really in action when you see the engine operating you got this metal pipe metal piping plastic piping and you got this metal piece right here and you got your pilot trucks down here and you got and then you come up to the cab area you got some fire box rivets down here and some molded in piping which is okay then you got your brakes that you can see visible right here then you come up to the cab which is really nice it's a big cab that's what I like about the big steam locomotives back then which they had really big cabs while you walk around the engine without a problem in there you got uh, two separately applied figures and then when you look in the cab when you turn the engine on the, the fire box glow turns on that thing, same goes things with the headlight. Unlike your legacy engines, which the headlight and firebox go turn on when you turn the track power on. Lionel could improve by doing this method that MTH does, but we'll see in the future. 
in in the cab you got some separate you got molded in piping uh throttle um pressure gauges not painted nothing in here is painted except some of the piping uh you got metal seats for the crew to sit on then you got rivets going all alongside the cab here which is pretty nice uh then you got up here there's a window but it does not move or anything then you come between the engine and then you got your wired tether then you got your drawbar here to keep the two together now, well, MTH is not coming out with the wireless tethered like line out, but I think this method considering that this locomotive was released in 2010 that it should have had the wireless tether but then again I can't blame MTH because this thing is meant to ride on tight curves like unlike the new premier big steam locomotives where they run on those bigger curves so I bet you that's why they gave it the wire tether and the, and the draw bar now if you come to the tender it's pretty nice but the down factor with tender is there is a metal wood load how many locomotives do you know that actually have a metal wood load on the on the tender I don't know, but the way the the wood is set up with it straightened on around the edges and it all piled in there, it's pretty good. You got this beautiful Norfolk and Western painted on the side here. Then you got m rivets going all down the engine. Then you got some grab molded in grab irons, which I'm not real crazy about. You got the wood bunker in here, even though it's not as detailed, but you got the wood bunker in there move down you got these nice beautiful detailed trucks not as much as separately applied detailing mostly molded in detailing here but now to finish this off sorry about that let me get to the back here to finish this whole thing off to point this out I don't know what that is I'm guessing that's the water tank where they store water I don't know I can't find any sign of water tank loading but unless this is that where they keep the tools then there's no water tank which is pretty ironic considering that every steam locomotive has a water tank in its tender but you got no coupler cut bar here which is a downfall but then again back then the engineers and firemen would use the pins to hold the engines down between the car and the car but mostly molded in stuff here um, I don't want to ruin everything until the third part because Oh, one more thing. Over here, there's an air tank. You can't see it, though. I mean... There's an air tank right there. Put some more molded in piping here. Now, I don't want to start the engine up, because I don't want to ruin it. So, this was a short review of the engine. All I can say is that this thing has the most beautiful Protosound 2 sounds I've ever heard out of any Rail King engine. So... So, thank you for watching the review of the MTH steam locomotive. Now we'll move to part two, which is reviewing the passenger cars. And then after the passenger car review, we will go to part three, running session. Now, you're wondering how long has it been since I've actually used the siding as operating. Um, if you want to know, the siding, I actually isolated. So I cut all three rails, and then I soldered a middle rail wire, and then I soldered an outside rail wire. Now you're wondering, well, why did you separate them so far away? Well, I used the screw holes in the track. So, since I'm using some time here, we'll watch, I'll look over and I'll tell you about how I hooked up the DCS with the Legacy real quick. Do -do 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 Elevator music. Okay. So, how I hooked this up is that you take your transform wires and plug it into the fixed voltage input one then you take your output wires to the track but you take your legacy wire and plug it into the block and then you, that's how you basically hook it up to the legacy so that's all for part one thank you for watching and i'll see you in part two